Now that we understand the process of meiosis in which we make sex cells, so we get half our genes from a mom and half from our dad, let's talk about what happens when those genes come together to make an offspring. Now it can be anything from making plants to making humans. We deal with what are called genes. Now the, the easiest way to explain this is to use letters and originally there was a guy by the name of Mendel, Gregor Mendel, and I wrote that in a bad place, so I'll go ahead and put that in another place. Gregor Mendel, he was a gentleman who um, started noticing traits. He was a, a monk and he was growing pea plants. You'll probably remember this from your biology class. And he started noticing that he had pea plants that were really tall and some that were really short. And he, as he started growing plants from season to season to season, he wondered why some of them were really tall and then they were really short. And some were going to have uh, green pea pods and some of them had wrinkled peas on them. And he started noticing the flowers on them and all those things. And so he started figuring out the basics of genetics. Let's say, for example, a big T stands for a tall plant and then a little T stands for a short plant. First couple of definitions. This is what is called the dominant gene. The dominant gene. The dominant means it dominates. Whenever it's located there, that's what you're going to see. This is what is called the recessive gene. It is sort of the hidden gene. You don't quite you may not see it every single time. So let me explain. Combinations that can happen. Big T, big T. Realize you get one gene from your mom and one from your dad. It works in plants that way too. One plant gives one gene, one gives another. So you could have big T, big T, you could have big T, little t, or you could have little t, little t. These are possible things of how you can put these two letters together. First, is this one tall or short? Well, I see two of the dominant gene. This is going to be a tall plant. I see a big T and a little t. Well, that dominating gene here is going to cover up the recessive. This one's also going to be tall. In this case, I have two short genes. This is the way you get a short plant in this case. <clears throat> so the dominating gene covers it. Now, how can you have two varieties of tall? Well, in this case, you get a, a term that goes with this. First, this is called a homozygous dominant gene. Homozygous dominant is what this one is right here. This one is what is called homozygous recessive. Now let's take the words apart real quick. Homo means the same. It means it's the same letter. Yeah, it is. It's the same letter. But this is the dominant gene, so this is homozygous dominant, and this is the recessive gene, so it's homozygous recessive. The only way that you can get a recessive gene to be seen is in the homozygous format. You're going to have to have two of that, that recessive gene in order for it to be seen. This one, on the other hand, in the middle is called a heterozygous dominant. Now, why dominant? Because I'm seeing the dominant gene, heterozygous. Hetero means different. So you're going to have dominant genes. You're going to have recessive genes. When you put them together, when you get one from the mom and one from the dad, this is one version, homozygous dominant, homo, heterozygous dominant. You see the recessive gene is in there, but you can't see it. And this one's homozygous recessive. Now what we're going to talk about in the next session is what happens when this kind of plant crosses with this kind of plant. What kind of things can happen? How do you pass on your genes? But as of this point, getting, like in humans, half our genes from our mom and dad, it's a little more complex on being tall and short in humans, but on the simplistic level, we pass our genes on. You can see one parent gave this gene, one gave this, another gave this and this, and so on and so on. Dominant and recessive genes.